Hi, welcome back to McClatchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClatchy and today we are starting a new playlist on algebraic techniques. And in this video, we're going to look at an introduction to algebra. And this is aimed at our students in grades six, seven, middle school, early junior high school across the world. So first of all, in this video, we're going to talk about what algebra is. When do we use it in real life? We're going to look at some new vocabulary. So here's a list of the vocabulary we're going to cover today. Terms, expressions, equations, pronumerals, coefficients and variables. We're also going to talk about a few very basic algebra conventions and then we'll have a very quick chat about what's coming up next and how you can engage further with us on the channel. So firstly, what is algebra? Well, algebra is a part of mathematics and it's a part of the mathematical language that we are using throughout high school and into university. It's a way that we can use to describe unknown amounts in some real life contexts and problems. Now that may not make a lot of sense right now, but it will once we get into it over the next few videos. So typically we're using letters to represent amounts that we don't know what they are. So we're using those letters, could be any letter of the alphabet from A to Z, and we simply use that letter in place of a number. And we're going to talk a lot about that, what that actually means coming up. Now, many people actually engage with algebra thinking because I hear a lot of people say to me, especially a lot of students, when am I ever going to use this in real life? I've never used the letters A, B and C and X and Y to do things in real life. And my parents said they've never done that either. But algebraic thinking is something that we use our brains for without even realizing it. And we use that to solve any kind of problem where there's some sort of level of uncertainty. A very quick example I can think of in my real life where I've used it on a day-to-day -day basis was when I was actually planning my wedding and I didn't know how many people were going to come to the wedding. I had a fixed amount that it was going to cost per person. So in my mind, I was doing lots of different sums. What if 100 people decide to come? What if 120 are coming? What if 110 are coming? The amount of people coming was unknown. And so I was doing calculations in my head for different costs of the wedding based on these unknown quantities. I was using algebraic techniques without even realizing it. Also, we use algebra explicitly in a range of careers. And what I mean by that is they intentionally go out and use letters and algebras and formulas. So in all sorts of science careers, they're using formulae. Um, engineering, computing, accounting, statistics, careers, people like dietitians and nutritionists and analysts of different kinds, they all use formulas and algebra is part of using a formula. So that's a career choices where you're definitely de going to be using algebra. But algebraic thinking is also used, as I just mentioned, I've used it in real life without realizing I was using it. But that whole concept of using algebra in your mind to solve for unknowns is used in a big range of careers. Things like welders, electricians, carpenters, builders, architects, the list goes on. Basically anybody who's using any kind of formula to work out, for example, the area of a space or or the um, perimeter of an area. Um, lots of those practical careers that are hands-on careers where they've got to work out quantities of materials based on different measurements. They are using algebraic techniques. They may not necessarily sit down and use letters and, and numbers together, but they are using algebraic thinking. And that's going to make a lot more sense with some of the problems that we're going to solve in this video series. Now, you might be thinking, well, I'm looking at that list and I don't want to be any of those careers. I can't ever see myself doing any of those jobs. That's quite possible. You may never end up in a career and you may never use algebra out of high school for the rest of your life. Always a possibility. But the truth is when we're young um, and even when we're old, we change careers a lot. In fact, I think the average number of times they expect we're going to change directions in our careers now is over seven times on average. So that means some people change careers even more than that. Um, I know when I was 11 or 12, I wanted to be an actor for a living. Haven't quite ended up doing that yet. Still sometimes do it as a bit of a hobby, but definitely not my career. So what I thought I was going to be when I was 11 hasn't turned out that way. And in fact, I ended up in a career I never expected. I ended up being a pricing manager for a very large retailer. And as part of that role, I actually had to do some programming, even though I'd never been trained as a computer um, programmer. I actually had to take a very big database and I had to program a number of formulas into that using algebra. I never expected that was going to be something I would do when I was in high school. It just turned out that that's the job I was given and I had to go ahead and do it. And thankfully, I remembered a lot of my algebraic techniques from high school. So now that's what algebra is. Let's talk about some new vocabulary. The first one is we're going to come across this word 
terms. Now we're not talking about terms as in a school term that might last for a certain number of weeks. No, these are algebraic terms. And what we call a term is all of the different variations or possibilities in an algebra sentence. Now that might not make much sense, but let's talk about different kinds of terms and it will all start to sink in. So whole numbers and fractions and decimals, they're all types of terms. So the number 4000, 80.2, a half, 15, any number you can think of that we've been working with. We've been working with concrete numbers all the way through primary school and into high school. They're all what we call a term in algebra. A different kind of term is a number letter combination. So that's another type of term. So if I had 6y, 30m, half an x, 15ab, any number letter combination you could possibly think of. Um, you could have 10 and then the whole letters of the alphabet after it. That is what we call a term. And we also have letter number combinations with powers as well. That's a different type of term again. So here are some examples. We've got 3y squared, 20m to the power of 4, a quarter of an x cubed, and 10xy squared. So we can see we're bringing in letters with numbers, multiple letters together, powers. Um, even if we brought square roots in, they're also a type of term. Okay, now you might be thinking, okay, well, what's the big deal about that? In our next and upcoming videos, different types of terms are important to know the difference between different types of terms. So this video is more about informing and defining what a term is to start with. Okay, let's now talk about what an expression is. A group of terms that we've lumped together in an algebra sentence is something called an expression. So you've heard of expressions in real life. You've been told to use more expression when you're doing public speaking. Um, you might be told, I don't like the look of the expression on your face. Um, we're learning a different language now, we're learning the language of maths, and an expression is an algebra sentence. So we can have algebra sentences or expressions that could be just a single term, and we've seen some of these terms here before. Um, each of those on their own is called an expression. But when we also group them together using different operations, and now when we talk about operations in maths, we're not talking about going to hospital and having your tonsils taken out. In maths, operations are plus, minus, times, and divide. So an expression is where we have a group of terms and they've got different things happening to them. So here's some examples. We've got a letter plus a number, x plus 2. A letter, take away a number, y, take away 1. These are different expressions. 5x multiplied by 10 is another expression. 8x divided by 3. And we can also have combinations of operations as well. You can see in that last example, 12x plus 4m take away 2y, also an expression. We've got plus going on, we've got minus going on, we've got a few different letters, a few different numbers. So whenever we group the algebra together in a sentence like this, it's called an expression. Now, an equation is like an expression. However, we have an equal sign in an equation. And then that's what we call an equation. So the way to remember it is an expression, no equal sign. Equation, equa, sounds like equals. It has the equal symbol. Another word that we use sometimes in science and maths is the word formula for an equation. Now, formulae is the plural of a formula. So a formula is one. When you've got more than one, we don't say formulas. We say formulae, just to be technical. And here's some example of some formulae. So you can see they've all got the equal sign. Some of them make no sense, like x plus 1 equals 8, y minus 1 equals 20, um, 3x plus 7y equals 10. When I say they make no sense, we don't know what context they're from in real life. They're not formulas that we would use. However, you can see some down the bottom that might be familiar. V equals pi r squared high. That is the formula for a cylinder. Um, for its volume. We've also got equals mc squared, that's Einstein's famous formula there. So you can have formulae that are ones that apply to real life situations, they're equations. You can also have equations that are just made up numbers and letters together and we're going to be using a lot of those over the next few videos. Now something called a variable is any letter that we use in algebra, we call it a variable. And the reason why it's called a variable is because it represents an unknown amount and it can change or vary depending on the problem that we're solving. So if we just skip back a slide, we can see, for example, in this particular slide, we've got X's, we've got Y's, we've got V's, H's, we've got E's, M's, C's. All of those are called variables. Um, in this particular example here, I've got an X and a Y. They are also variables. Now, if we think about that in terms of X plus Y equals 10, X could be the number 9 and Y could be the number 1. 9 plus 1 equals 10. Alternatively, X could be the number 8 
and y could be representing the number 2, 8 plus 2 also equals 10. In fact, there's an infinite number of possibilities of two numbers that would add together to make 10. Um, it's not just the numbers from 0 to 10, it's also all your decimals, fractions, and all your negative numbers as well. When you add those together, you could come up with a number 10. And that's why we call x and y variables, because they could change depending on the situation. The next thing we're going to talk about is something called a pronumeral. We've actually already talked about it, we just didn't call it a pronumeral yet. It's all the letters in algebra, we call them pronumerals. And this comes, when we break the word pronumeral up into two, pro means after, numeral means number, it comes after the number. And in fact, when we're doing algebra, we always write our letters after our numbers. So here's an example here. In this case, our pronumerals are x and y. Then we've got something called the coefficient. It's a fancy name for the number in front of the letter. So in this particular situation where x and y are our pronumerals, 3 and 5 are our coefficients. So we are going to talk about pronumerals and coefficients in future videos. It's important that you understand the difference between the two. So you may want to go back through this video again and pause and perhaps write down some of these definitions so that when you watch future videos and we talk using the language of mathematics, it will all make sense to you. Okay, so they are our key definitions that we're going to be using for our future. So some conventions you need to be aware of in algebra. And when I say conventions, convention means a tradition or something that we typically do and it's just assumed everybody knows that's what we do. So the first convention is we always write our coefficient, our number, and then our pronumeral, our letter. So here's an example of how we would write that. We would write 3x, not x3. So... Um, it's important to know that because sometimes when you write x3, it can look like times by 3. So that's why we write the 3 and then the letter afterwards. Now, we don't write coefficients if the coefficient is 1. So if the number in front of the letter is the number 1, we would just write the letter by itself and not 1 in front of it. You're not technically wrong if you write 1y, but we just like to save time in mathematics. So we just write the letter y and it's assumed that you know that that 1 is invisible and that if it's a single y all by itself it's just one y. The next thing we don't do in algebra is we don't write our multiplication symbols. So um, we would write 5m not 5 times n. One of the reasons for this is that we use the letter x a lot and it can be really confusing and messy when we write times x. Um, x is for some reason a favorite variable for mathematicians. So we typically just write 5m. Also, it's a time saver. We don't want to have to write times every time we're multiplying because basically every letter mul um, number combination is multiplied by one another. We'll talk about that more in a future video. But anytime you see 5m, it just means 5 times n. And that's something also to be aware of. It doesn't mean 5 plus m. It means 5 multiplied by m. Um, we have that in multiplication sign once again, like the 1, it's invisible. The last convention I'm going to talk about today is that our pronumerals, or our letters, are all written in alphabetical order. So we would typically write 7ab, not 7ba. Now, once again, you're still not wrong if you write 7ba. It's just the tradition to do it in alphabetical order. So it's important to know your alphabet. Well, that's all we have time for on this video today. I hope you found that as a really helpful introduction to some of the vocabulary about algebra. It gives you a bit of context about why we do it at all in real life ever. And if you're wanting to know what's coming up, we're going to be building some more videos here on the channel. We're going to look at simplifying expressions. We're going to look at expanding brackets, factorizing, and so much more because this is just the tip of the iceberg for algebra. Algebra goes all the way into our senior years with some cool, exciting mathematical techniques. So if you're a math nerd like me, you're going to get very excited. And if you want to engage further with our channel and know what you can do to stay in touch and find out what's coming up in the series or when new videos are released, first of all, you could like and subscribe to the channel, hit the notifications button. You'll always know when we've got a new video available. You can follow us on social media. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Also, if you want to engage further with the channel and I guess give back for all of the time that we put in to share with you, you could just tell somebody about our channel. Um, it's wonderful when we see people um, like and comp then make comments um, so that's telling us and giving us feedback also sharing with their teacher sharing with a friend or a sibling and if you're a parent who has a 
child coming up through primary school and you're wanting to be able to support them with algebra, this is a great way for parents as well to be able to help their children with their homework. So if you've got a mum or a dad that always says to you, I'm not very good at maths, maybe you could share the video with them so that they can help you out. Well, thank you so much for watching today. If you've got any questions at all, you can contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. You've been watching McClutchy Mass and I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.